welcome on this Lord's Day. So I'm glad you're here to worship with us. For those present and for those watching online, we welcome you this morning as we worship the Lord, as we focus and celebrate God's goodness through our gratitude. And so we officially welcome you today. Um, before we continue our worship through song this morning, I want to share with you just a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first of all, I wish each of you a very happy Thanksgiving to you and to your families. Um, also, later today, so around 3.15 p.m., we have a group that's gathering to distribute Thanksgiving baskets. So uh, for anyone that would like to help with that, we have close to 100 Thanksgiving baskets that we are distributing to the community. Uh, for those that are a part of Eau Claire Baptist, also those uh, that are part of Koinonia of Columbia. So this is something we look forward to every year. Uh, we're so grateful to Northside Baptist for um, for blessing us with extra Thanksgiving uh, baskets that we can then use to bless the community. So we're excited about that. Um, so with that, uh, we'll continue our worship with this next hymn. So for those present, we invite you to stand with us as we sing together. Welcome again, everybody. Yet, 
I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. And so Habakkuk reminds us that when things perhaps are not going the way we hoped they would go, and when, when circumstances around us are less than ideal, through the prophet Habakkuk, we are reminded as he writes in Habakkuk chapter 3, in spite of everything else, I will rejoice in the Lord. And then from Psalm 103, I invite you this morning to bless the Lord with us. Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of His benefits. And listen to what the psalmist says in verses 3 and 4. Who pardons all of your iniquities. That is a reason to bless the Lord. Who heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. And so today we have... Many, many reasons to bless the Lord. We have many, many reasons to express our gratitude to Him. And so I want to invite you over the next couple of moments. Uh, we're going to have a prayer time together. Uh, for those watching, I know you may have prayer needs, and I invite you to take your needs to the Lord. For those present today, if you have a prayer need in your life, if you'd let it be known by the lifting of your hand so that I can see you, and God surely knows, and God is eager to hear and to answer His people when we pray. And so I invite you now to bow with me for a moment of prayer and then a time of silent meditation and reflection. So bow with me now, please, as we pray together. Our Father, we are grateful for Your goodness. And Lord, we stand today before You giving you thanks because, Lord, you have been so good to your people. Father, we recognize today, like many in Habakkuk's day, Lord, when circumstances were less than ideal, at least in our view. Lord, when situations around us perhaps um, feel a bit strange, may today, we like Habakkuk, may we... Um, may we still rejoice in the Lord and may we still hope in the God of our salvation. And so, Lord, today, uh, for those here, for those watching who need a special touch from heaven's hand today, Lord, right now, under the sound of my voice, for those hearing this prayer, I pray uh, that you would give each of us, Lord, a special touch of heaven's hand in our life. Lord, for those who need healing, for those who need to be made right with you, Lord, for those who need uh, encouragement today, Father, for those who need uh, strength and perseverance, Lord, I pray that you would bless with those qualities that are of eternal value. Lord, today, for those who have physical needs, we are so grateful for the many families today that will be touched through the giving of a Thanksgiving basket. And I pray, Father, you would bless every home and every life for receiving a basket within the Eau Claire community. Lord, we also praise you today for good news. I praise you today uh, that Sandra is recovering and back with us. Lord, we pray for others who need your healing touch. We lift Sandy Pristino up to you today, Lord, and others who are battling sickness, Lord. Uh, for those that are battling um, effects of the coronavirus that we do not even know, Lord, we lift them up to you today. Uh, we lift healthcare professionals up to you today, Lord, those on the front lines of this pandemic. And we thank you, Lord, today for your blessings, and we bow before you with a spirit of great gratitude.
we lift this prayer to you today in Jesus' name.
minutes together talking about gratitude. And uh, let me ask um, to help me shape the message today. So let me ask, how many of you present here are, are folks that are pet people? You have pets in your home. Anybody have pets? All right. Just a couple. So how many of you would consider yourself dog lovers? Anybody? All right. A couple of those. How about cat lovers? Anybody? Ah, oh, not many. All right. A couple. So our family, we would normally consider ourselves dog lovers. So we've always had at least a dog or two in our home. We have two now. And about four months ago, we introduced to our home a kitten that was just a beautiful baby kitten. And I wasn't sure we'd be able to acclimate the kitten with our nearly 100-pound mixed shepherd dog, but we did. And so now that, that kitten who's getting a little bit bigger, I promise you, rules the roost. I mean, the 100-pound dog will nearly bow down to the kitten. And I've learned something from that kitten that I want you to, to think about with me as we talk about gratitude today. So I've learned from that kitten, uh, no matter what, that kitten is able to find a source of water. Um, I tell you, you know, Wednesday night, for example, we were gathering together for Zoom uh, prayer time, and I'd fixed a nice tall glass of ice water. And as soon as I sat out at the table, and it's like that kitten heard the ice rattle together in the cup, and there she was on top of the table trying to get in my fresh glass of ice water. We have a kitchen sink that drips, and I, I need to get that fixed, but every once in a while, I'll see the kitten on the edge of the kitchen sink, just looking for the drip of water to come out of the faucet. faucet. I am determined the kitten can find water anywhere. And that reminds me of our lives as God's people, that we should always be looking for ways to give thanks to the Lord. We should always be looking for reasons to be filled with gratitude. And our text that we read from Habakkuk chapter 3 reminds us of this. And even Habakkuk writes, uh, Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, and the produce of the olive fail and the fields yield no food. By the way, I'm so proud of our Koinonia children who, who um, yielded the crop of collars yesterday of dozens and dozens of bags of collars. What a blessing that is. And Habakkuk says that even when that doesn't happen, yet I will rejoice in the Lord and I will take joy in the God of my salvation. And so that reminds us about gratitude today. Uh, for those present, you have been serving your bulletin with a couple of points of gratitude. And if you have a pen with you, I invite you to fill in uh, these points about gratitude today. And uh, for those watching online, I'll email these notes out later so you can follow along at a later time. But we're reminded about gratitude. And we, today, first of all, on your outline, we have gratitude for God's goodness. This summer, we spent nearly 12 weeks studying Psalm 23. And we were reminded of the many ways that God is indeed good. And like the prophet Habakkuk writes in Habakkuk chapter 3, when circumstances around us are not the most ideal circumstances, even then we will rejoice in the Lord. Because I tell you today, we serve a God who is good. Amen? We serve a God who is filled with goodness. Second today, and I was thinking about this in the midst of this political season that we still find ourselves in, uh, even nearly two weeks after Election Day, 
today we can give gratitude for a governor. In Isaiah chapter 9, a passage that we normally focus on around Christmas, and by the way, next Sunday we will kick off the first Sunday of Advent, but Isaiah reminds us that we today can have gratitude for a great governor in the Lord Jesus. Isaiah writes in Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. And listen to this beautiful promise. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government of peace. Today, we can give gratitude for a ruler whose name is Jesus Christ, who is the wonderful counselor. If you're wondering what to do in times such as those we're facing today, I invite you to ask the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the eternal father, the prince of peace. And then third today, we can give gratitude for God Himself, we spent the last two Sundays talking about the attributes of our wonderful God, about His greatness. And so there are many qualities about the Lord for which we can give thanks today. And I've included a few of these on the outline for you to follow. And I invite you to use this week as you celebrate Thanksgiving in this odd time and season that we're living in, and yet we still have so much to thank God for. And so there are several several reasons that we can give gratitude for God today. If you're looking on your outline, one of these is His love, His love that is never failing. Theologian F.F. F. Bruce said this, God bestows His blessing without discrimination. Aren't we glad of that today? The followers of Jesus are children of God and they should manifest the family likeness by doing good to all, even to those who deserve the opposite. God is so good through His love when we don't deserve it. Can I remind you today, and for those watching, can I remind you today, the Lord loves you with an everlasting love. Another gratitude for God's qualities are His patience. I, I, I want to see a show of hands today. How many of you would describe yourself as a patient person? Anybody? Patience is tough to come by, right? It is challenging to be patient at times. And yet we are reminded that God in His great patience to us is yet another reason for gratitude. Woodrow Crow, perhaps you've heard of him, uh, says this, quite honestly, most people are quick to write someone off. I'm guessing you have been there. But our God is a God of the second chance. Learn from one who is patient with you, and you'll learn to be patient with others. We thank God today for His patience. Notice on your outline, if you're following, we thank God today for His salvation, for His wonderful gift of salvation that is, that is absolutely free for us. And yet, Jesus Christ, as we know, paid the price for our salvation. We thank God for that today. John Calvin, a great theologian, said, Since no man is excluded from calling upon God, the gate of salvation is open to all. There is nothing else to hinder us from entering but our own unbelief. Perhaps the greatest thanksgiving of all for your life today is that you would receive His salvation that is a free gift 
to you. Others on the back of your outline, God's sovereignty, knowing that God is still in control in times of uncertainty. And I refer you back to Habakkuk chapter 3 in the midst of those seasons when there is no fruit on the vine, when there is uh, no produce in the field, when there is no flock from the fold, when there is no herd in the stalls, yet we acknowledge as God's people that He is still a good God who is sovereign and who is the ruler over all. We thank God today for His wisdom that God knows what is best even when we are unsure and uncertain about what is best for our lives. Yet in God's uh, glorious wisdom, as J.I. Packer says, by the way, uh, J.I. Packer, who, who went to be with the Lord earlier this year, in, at, toward the beginning of 2020, uh, wrote, a, wrote, wrote a, a timeless treasure of a book called Knowing God. If you've never read that, it is worth your time. I remember reading that at the age of 25, and I was on an airplane looking down over the mountains of Kentucky and there was a haze of clouds that were flowing over those beautiful mountain hillsides. And I remember sitting on that airplane in the window seat reading this book by J.I. Packer about knowing God and looking down over His creation. And yet J.I. Packer reminds us Wisdom is the power to see and the inclination to choose the best and highest goal together with the surest means of attaining it. Wisdom is, in fact, the practical side of moral goodness. As such, it is found in its fullness only in God. He alone is naturally and entirely and invariably wise. Today we give thanks that God is wise. And then we give thanks last today for God's mercy. Oh, the rich mercy of God that, that does not give us what we deserve. God in His mercy, that Old Testament word for mercy, it's a beautiful word that, uh, that is transcribed Hesed. It is a word that means God's loving kindness. It mirrors mercy. And so those words flow together in the Hebrew language. A beautiful word about God's loving kindness and mercy. Alistair Begg says the mercy of God is an all-embracing mercy. The mercy of God is, is like a parent to his or her child that says, son, I know you did wrong, but come climb in my lap and let me wrap my loving arms around you. It is the mercy of God is like a loving parent that embraces us in spite of. And Alistair Begg says that it breaks down the barriers that man builds up. Everything about God is mercy. And so I invite you today, as we are told in the book of Habakkuk, we give thanks and we give gratitude to the Lord this morning. Amen? Can I hear you say amen loud and clear? Amen? amen. We give thanks to God in gratitude for who He is, for His goodness, that He is our eternal ruler. There will be no recounts in heaven. Amen. It has been determined and, and not based on the voice of people, but because of who God is, we give gratitude that we have an eternal ruler who is a wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. We give thanks today for his patience, for his love, for his salvation, for his sovereignty, for his wisdom and for His mercy. And then I close today with Hebrews chapter 12, verses 26 through 29. The writer of Hebrews, to sum it up, says this, Therefore, let us 
be grateful. Are you grateful today? Let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And I tell you today that if you are a child of God, you can rejoice in gratitude today that our eternal home is heaven. And that is why we pray today, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Can I ask you in closing, is your life built upon this kingdom of God that cannot be shaken? Everything around us is shaking right now, isn't it? Cases are back on the rise. Things are shaking Political circumstances around us are shaking, right? They're, they're moving. They're unstable. Things are not solidified. And yet, the writer of Hebrews says, let us be grateful for we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I invite you today to give gratitude to the Lord as we sing together this closing hymn. And I invite you to stand with me now. This hymn of Count Your Blessings. And I pray that God blesses you richly this Thanksgiving week as we respond in gratitude to Him. Let's sing together, Count Your Blessings. Christ Jesus, whose name we pray together, and everybody said,